All breasts are created equal, but some are certainly more equal than others. This is definitely one of those. This is the 2020 engraving spec double E double L classic. And it's really nice. Before we get started on the pretty gun, it's worth checking out the case. It is slightly better than your average boring plastic case. This is an ABS case that is trimmed in lovely leather. Internally, it's a little bit nicer as well. You have this beautiful brown material, Bretta booklet, just very nicely put together. Um, not that many people care about it, but when you're buying a better gun, you do get slightly better quality bits, which is very nice. So, here is the gun. Every WWO Classic is finished with a hand-fitted wooden heel plate, although these are obviously ready for the Beretta pad system, so you can make them what you will. The wood is always going to be very different, and as with every sort of higher-end WWO Classic and Jubilee, the wood varieties are quite wide. This one is particularly interesting, actually. I've never seen anything quite like it. It's almost it's almost coarse, and you can almost see, sort of see that sort of flaming out from the back. It's a very interesting piece of wood. It's quite messy, but I genuinely think it's really beautiful. And this side is very, very dark, but extremely subtle. You have, oh, it's, it is just absolutely stunning. Um, I really very, very much like that. It is fitted with a little oval on the bottom and has this swept back, rounded semi-pistol grip there. Very slim through the neck for a 12 bore as well. And a lot of people sort of who prefer a, a more elegant gun will really enjoy that. It actually feels feels like a 20 ball in the hand. It does feel like a 20 ball in the hand. It is laser checkered on both sides there, which is very well executed, but was, as you'd expect. Where it starts to become a classic is here. You have the extended trigger guard, which you do not get with a double E double L. What's quite nice actually here is you start seeing a little bit of hand work. It's actually hand engraved at the back here. Uh, not across the top there, but it is just a couple of hand engraved highlights that are really nice. It's a, it's a nice touch. I think some people, as we've seen in the past, have the propensity to put a little bit too much handwork on there without then dedicating the time needed to make it top quality. These little hand bits are simple enough that they're beautiful and are easy enough to do without doing them badly. And if you sort of look around the outside, you can see the cut marks and such. It's just enough to let you know that these guys. I've done this by hand, it's quite nice really. Uh, as I said, you have a canthus scroll there, a fitted, single, non-adjustable silver trigger. Beautiful, glad they didn't go with gold. Selected, selective trigger with an automatic safety. You have this scroll work down there, it's almost Celtic. And this whole gun, the design of this gun actually is what really intrigues me most, which is what we're gonna get to onto next. It's, it's a real mishmash of ideas and designs, and I tell you what, they've taken a very bold statement, a very bold move with this design, and I kind of like it. I'm not usually a fan of these sort of hyper-busy guns, but there's something on here for absolutely everybody. So, where do we start? Well, uh, we're going to start by taking the foreign and barrels off so that we can move this thing around a little bit quicker. The real interesting thing here actually is usually when you look underneath it would say sort of uh, not to the hits, it would say Bottega Gina Vanelli, who is the guys who used to do it, I believe. This one says Nuovo Casello. I'm probably mispronouncing that in every way, but that is the interesting part that this is actually engraved by either a different engraving house, engraving house or in a completely different style. Most importantly that this is done by a five axis laser engraver and as such is on a whole new level of engraving. Uh, those who are fans of the old hand-finished laser cut ones or rolled and then hand-finished ones probably won't be a fan of oh it's all laser done but actually some of the best guns out there now are laser done. And it's a very good way of producing amazing engraving for fairly reasonable prices. This gun's full RRP is I believe just over 8,000 um, although like with all things there will be a um, recommended minimum retail price of somewhere south of there so it will be more affordable than a grand. 
back to the, the whole design here. It's a mixture of kind of Celtic y Aztec y engraving with a canvas and game scene. It's really quite smart. Before we get there, the wood metal fit around the head is actually pretty good. Uh, slightly overdone, but that's how they all come and actually is for the betterment of these things. I really like how they've got, to, to achieve this super slim grip, they've actually got a really deep cut around these raised areas here. A really deep cut. And I kind of like that contrast because it is finished so well, the radius is nice, and it's actually pleasing in its own little way. I think it's not far away from being vile, but they've really just stepped over that line into really nice territory. You know, there's no there's no blending or blowing there. It's, it's very, very nice, very pleasant. So you have, on the right hand face, a pheasant game scene, a very nice, nice acanthus, a little Celtic plait. It's beautiful, it's very deep. It's still quite clean and you have these lovely areas of nothingness. The borders are very nicely done between clean and scroll. Have a look at these fences. That is probably my favorite part of that whole gun. That is a very beautiful thing. A very beautiful thing and very well finished in itself. In terms of engraving quality, it really is up there. The only thing that I dislike about this engraving wise is I feel like the game scene by comparison to the rest of it is slightly lesser quality, even though it is up there. And it's clear perhaps that the engraving machine is probably much better at making shapes than it is sort of doing this, this detail, even though it is still exceptional. Maybe I'm just trying to be too picky there. Uh, maybe I just don't understand what they were trying to achieve. And it is still very, very beautiful, but it's just different to how they used to do it. And how they used to do it was very nice. However, how they used to do some of the Acanthus work was significantly less nice than this. So I'm gonna shut up there, I suppose, because I don't wanna get in trouble. On the bottom, we have Beretta 687 WLL Classic. And again, a very full on image. And on the offside, you have a little partridge, a little grey partridge. And in the same sentiment that the sort of the continuous lines here are fantastic and the way that it's cut actually allows them to cut sort of, sort of bevels into it so it almost looks hand done in places. There's something about the, maybe just the way they've designed it that is so new that I'm not appreciating it yet. That's probably the best way to put that, I think. is It is so new that I'm not appreciating it yet. But I do appreciate is this new slimline grip and everything other than the game scenes. And I do think the game scenes are beautiful, they're just, I don't know, I don't even wanna knock them because they are really well done. They're just perhaps different to how they used to be. And change is very difficult as we found out in the last month. Um, so there you go. Apart from that, I think we'll all agree that this gun is an absolute stunner in every way. And there's not one bit of service that hasn't been used and yet it is still not over the top. Very nice, I think we'll all agree. Uh, moving on to the fore end, you have that, it's like a Celtic come Aztec kind of affair. It's cool, I like it. On the fore end release, you have the Acanthus scroll and it's all silver painted as well, so it's got a really nice contrast across that fore end iron. Clipping them together. The metal to metal fit is actually exceptional when they're put together properly. It, it's a nice thing, it's a very nice thing. And more importantly than all of that put together and all of the looks, internally it is one of the most solid actions of all time because it's a Beretta. What is new and exciting on the Berettas is this, and you probably have noticed in the gun board segment that there's, there's tape on the barrels. And maybe you thought the barrel finish was different. No, just up on grade three guns from now on, or grade three and above, for on above grade three guns, on greater than grade three guns, they are now putting tape on the barrels, protective oil tape to keep the barrels from scratching, for increasing the life of the bluing, and um, but it's interesting. It's certainly interesting. Whether that's just because they were sick of guns getting to to shots or to people and people going, there's a scratch on it, I don't know, but. It's a nice touch, it's a good protective touch. I quite like it, um, maybe, I'm not sure. I would take it off to show you the bluing, but you know, it's it's a blue shotgun barrel, it's not that exciting. Uh, you have the standard rib for a game Beretta, a little silver bead sight, and chokes. How does it balance? Well, let's find out. Probably a little bit towards the front, being a game spec gun, 
quite a bit towards the front being a game spec gun. Rather towards the front being, being a game spec gun. So, um, about a full two inches in front of the hinge pin. But where they've slimmed down this stock so much, one cannot help but think that was inevitable. In the fixture, that will obviously move back a little bit. And I'll tell you what, actually in the swing, it's not too bad. Although you do feel like all of your weight is in your left hand. What would be nice potentially would be to have a little bit extra weight in the back or just buy a fixed choke gun um, and be done with it. Although, again, that's very much up to you. I'd probably opt to put sort of four or five ounces in the back. You know, because it does feel a little bit like you're missing your right hand's worth of gun. But that is part and parcel of making a very slim gun that actually when you just pick it up is so beautiful and so elegant. I genuinely really like this gun. I'm a big big fan of WLs and all of the top end Berettas because actually what they're doing, as much as people will say, oh, it's just a silver pigeon with shiny engraving and nice wood, and I have been known to say that kind of thing in the past. Actually, what you're buying is a Range Rover that is as cheap to fix and maintain and just as reliable as a VW Golf, but it's still a Range Rover. And that is probably the better analogy of all of this because actually what you're buying is a absolute workhorse that is also utterly luxurious. And well, that's pretty good when you think that there's a lot of guns out there that are that nice and that expensive that will also cost you a fortune to maintain. This is not one of them. Uh, more importantly, you walk into every gun shop pretty much in the entire world and somebody will have spare parts and will know how to fix one. And more importantly, it is so so very pretty. I must admit those fences have really won my heart. Um, it is a good looking gun and if you want to be just slightly more special than somebody who owns a WLL but not quite as special as someone who owns a Jubilee this fills a lovely lovely hole in the market and um, I think they've done a really good job. I think actually they have upgraded this into the 2020 engraving. I'm a big fan. Guys let me know your thoughts. It probably won't be for everybody. It's quite loud and like I said, it's not usually my cup of tea, but this is absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. Guys, take care. This has been brilliant. I hope you're doing all right. And we'll see you next time.